Well, once again, we are live from Richard V. Moore Gymnasium here on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. My name is Michael Torello. Happy to have your company. Happy to have the company again of Eric Dennis. And Eric, this is going to be a real tough test for the Wildcats today as they take on the number one team in the SWAC, the Alcorn State Braves. Yeah, they put it on us by, I think it was eight points at the victory at their place, right? So we've got to make up those points and add at least one more by the time that clock says all zeros at the end of this game. Well, immediately a big storyline is the top scorer for Alcorn State, Dominic Bruton, who averages 13.6 points a game, is not playing tonight. We don't know why he is out, but he is listed as a scratch. You know, but they've got some players, you know, Joshua, who scored 10 against us last time, Kendall gave us 12, Thorne 7, and Walker gave us 11, and they're all in the starting lineup tonight. For Bethune-Cookman, it's Harmon, Garrett, Davis, French, and Henderson. But the big man himself, Dylan Robertson, is available for Bethune-Cookman. He is on the bench. He has not played since the Illinois game on the 29th of December. Yeah, and his conditioning is going to be in question because his injury did not allow him to practice. So when he gets in the game, you may see a little bit of... Uh, him being a little out of basketball shape, game speed shape. But Braves, in the purple and, Braves in the purple and gold. Wildcats in the white, maroon and gold, and away we go. Kevin Davis on the baseline, fadeaway jump shot short. Skying for the rebound is Keandre Montgomery, a redshirt sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi. He leads the team in free throw percentage. Back up top, Byron Joshua, the sophomore who averages 10 points a game. He'll probably be their leading scorer. Yeah, Wildcats in man-to-man. -man. Underneath, here's Kendall. Doesn't get it to go. That's Jeremiah Kendall. And an empty possession down the floor for both teams. Good help by Henderson that last trip down on defense. Joe French standing in the corner, but it's going to go down low to Henderson. He can poke it back to Garrett, and they'll reset 12 on the shot clock. Garrett's going to take him. Garrett into a double team, extra pass. Davis from the corner, way too strong. Three on the shot clock. What a heads up play by Harmon to throw it off of Joshua and out. Yeah, you know, that, that was an unusual miss by Davis. He's a great shooter, and he, he wasn't close on that one. Two seconds to get a shot up. Harmon the gunner. Let's see where they go with it. Oh, all the way out to Garrett. He has to made chuck it. one up from half oh. court, and he actually almost made it hit the back of the iron. Yeah, he was just a little bit off on that. Long wing three is short from DeKedron Thorne. He's their top three-point shooter at 34%. Yeah, that was an NBA and beyond three. Joe French catch and shoot in and out. And Joe yeah. French close to hitting a pretty big milestone. He is 66 points away from hitting 1,000 points in his college career. Jeremiah Kendall from the Bronx, New York, puts that one in. Yeah, Kendall did a nice thing. It's called a rim run, where he's a big. He runs straight down the middle of the floor from one rim to the other, and he was wide open, laid it in. It's going to be important for Bethune Cooper to get our three-point shooting going. Currently 0 for 2 so far. Garrett to the baseline, back inside Henderson, gets it to go off the front of the rim. Nice use of the left hand by the freshman to score the first two points of the game for the Wildcats. Way to go, Henderson, assist Marcus Garrett. Now while the Braves are nine and two in the swack, the Wildcats just five and six as Joshua goes to the lane and scores. There are no easy games in the swack, so expect this one to be close all the way to the end. Yeah, Joshua showed an extra gear on that and really turned the corner super hard and fast. Good play by that young man. Joshua, a two-time uh, Louisiana state champion at Crescent City High School. Harmon to French, mid-range jumper, no, and Joe French is 0 for 2. That's a shocking start for Joe, who's... Usually so good off the dribble like that. Yeah, we're getting good shots out of our offense. Oh, look out. The bank is open for Keandre Montgomery. Yeah, straight on bank shot. He's acting like he does that all the time. I promise you that he does not. But that's why the backboard's up there, Mike. 
<laughs> you get to use it from any anywhere you want. 7-2 start for the Braves, and the Wildcats have struggled to get good shot selection here early on. It's aggressive double teaming from Alcorn. Underneath, extra pass Davis. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, he was fouled hard by, by Kendall, who really came across on the weak side to give help and was caught with the hard foul on Davis. That's Jeremiah Kendall. I mentioned he's a native of the Bronx, New York. He's on his third team in three years. Played at Tallahassee Community College, then Prairie View A&M, and then an in-conference transfer to Alcorn. Hmm. Davis came off the line when he let that ball go. He didn't, he didn't stay in his form on that, and that, that left it a little bit short. Davis, a 68 free throw shooter, gets that one to go, one of two, 7-3 Braves. And we were talking before the game started it, Eric, that both of these teams statistically are pretty close, yeah, even close. though the records are not. Yeah, very, very close statistically on points, rebounds, steals. A lot, of, a lot of the categories, very similar. French, nice stop hesitation. and go. Oh my goodness. Great hesitation by Joe. Good weak side help defense again by Kendall to come over. Or no, I'm sorry. Montgomery. That was Montgomery who came over and got that. I couldn't see when he went down. Yeah, number. a yeah. vicious swat by Keandre to take it away from French. But good hesitation by Joe because he knows that they have to respect his catch and shoot ability off of three. Davis takes a three, it's good. Yeah, nice play by Garrett to draw and pitch out to Davis for the wide open three at the top. Seven, six, bad guys. Here come the Wildcats on deep. Joshua around the pick and roll again. This time he misses the layup short and the shortest guy on the floor, Zion Harmon, grabs the rebound. We have numbers advantage. In transition, catch and shoot three for Garrett. Swish, it's good. Yeah, beautiful play by Zion to get the board, push it out. Marcus runs the floor to the open spot, fans out. Wide open three, assist. Zion Harmon. 9-7, but food Cookman on a quick little 6-0 run to take the lead. Kendall trying to back down the defense. The tip-in is good from DeKedron Thorne. Yeah, he did a nice job when he saw the shot was going up to get the inside position and was able to tip it back in. Tie ball game at nine. Just over five minutes played here for the first half. Garrett, Davis, extra pass, Harmon. Doesn't take the three. Henderson, extra pass. French will take the three though, and he hits those every single day and twice on Sundays. Good offense by the Wildcats to draw the defense in to get Joe the open three assist to Henderson. Nice job. Freshman. And you love it when your big men are getting assists because that's when you're working your inside out offense. Yeah, he's got good eyes, good vision to get that to Joe. Montgomery almost pulled up from three, drives past Davis and DeAndre Montgomery might be a problem. He only he averages 11.1 a game which is second on the team but first on the floor because of Bruton's not being available today. Garrett drives, goes oh. up, can't get it to fall. Henderson, whistle and a foul, and I think they're gonna get Alcorn for it. Yeah, they are, they're gonna get it on DeKedron Thorne as we hit the first media timeout. We'll take it with them. It's 12-11 BCU on top right here at the Cat Eye Network.
Stay up to date with everything Bethune-Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a follow on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU Athletics. That's BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU men's basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. Guess who's back? Back again. Dylan's back as Dylan Robertson enters the game for the first time since December 29th. Yeah, you know, at 6'10", he is critical to our size. We need him on the floor for the Wildcats. And this Alcorn State team is long, but they're not very tall. The tallest player on their team is Sean Walker at 6'8". Skipping through the lane, blocking foul called against Alcorn. Should be on number one. It is. It's on Dontrell McQuarter, the senior from Baton Rouge. Also a football player at Glen Oaks High School. And a former NCAA Junior College All-Conference selection at Heinz Community College. Cookman with a one-point lead. Garrett pin the primary ball handler. He floats oh. it up, and he doesn't get it to go off the rim. Good good offense by Garrett. Just didn't fall for him. McCorder in traffic over French misses it. And a nice save by Dylan Robertson. He doesn't look like he's missed a beat. <laughs> Harmon to the lane. Ball poked away. There was a couple of purple jerseys that tried to save it. Byron Joshua got the last look and threw it into the cheerleaders. Yeah, our ball underneath out of bounds. Let's see what we run. Now, it'll be important to see how long Dylan Robertson stays on the floor for because while he might be playing great now in five or ten minutes, who knows what his game shape is like. Yeah, for sure. Because, as you mentioned before, he hasn't been able to practice. It's not just games. Oh. Oh. It's going to go off of Kevin Davis and a turnover for Bethune-Cookman. First turnover of the ball game for either team. And BCU thinks they have it. Reggie Theus wants him to look at it. He is. And the referee says he didn't change the call, which is correct. They originally called it out of bounds, Alcorn State ball. Yeah, you know, Alcorn tipped it away. That's why, that's why Davis didn't catch it. And immediately the home crowd here at Bethune-Cookman giving the refs a little bit of stick. I, I honestly think it was the correct call. It was out off Davis' knee. But anyway, the Braves have it down by one. That's a moonshot three for Montgomery. One, not surprised he took it. He's had the hot hand early. Garrett all the way across. Oh. And Marcus has just been having trouble finishing at the lane. He's now one for five. Yeah, and all good shots too, right? Byron Joshua can't get it to go. First rebound and first play in the stat book for Robinson of the conference season. Here Extra pass, French. His defender closed out on the three-pointer and Joe made him pay. Yeah, nice setup by Garrett to get it to Zion who swings it around to Joe for the running one leg from the baseline. Two points, Wildcats, three-point lead. And we all know that French loves that three-point shot, but he can hit the running jump shot off of one leg, He's too. He's really good at that. And that's a new wrinkle that's been added to his game this year. Underneath in the post, McWhorter working on French. Oh, look out! Oh, they're going to call goaltending. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder what would have happened if Dylan didn't, didn't hit that. I don't know if it was going in. From our angle, it was impossible to tell the tra trajectory of the ball if it would have been a successful shot, but a spectacular <laughs> athletic play by Dylan Robertson. Now, they must have said that the ball was over the cone of the basket. Well, it was on its way down, on its way down, yeah. Okay. But anyway, it gives the two points to Alcorn. The lead is just one for BCU once again. Harmon yet to get off the mark on the score sheet today. And now it's Deshaun Dyson on the ball. Looking for a two-man game with Dylan. There it is. He does find it. Robertson takes the mid-range jump shot, and that was smooth. That, that was a nice two-man game between those two to get Dylan Robertson the open jumper. Two points and assist to Sean Dyson. Well, Robertson now has a rebound and two points. Two 
in the corner from McWhorter. Too strong, Robertson, another rebound. Yeah, he really looks, looks good so far, doesn't he? Here is Harmon. Yet to get off the score sheet today, but has two rebounds and two assists already for Zion. Zion to Robertson, exact same spot that he hit the last one, he hits it again! You know, maybe he's not on their scouting report because of his injury. I, I mean, and even someone who watched him for the, all of his time here at Bethune-Cookman, I, I haven't really seen him pull up from 18 feet very much, and he's hit two in a row. Dice, a nice defense on Devin Carter. Under the basket, McWhorter, and Robertson did just enough. I don't think he'll get credit for the block, but he did alter the shot. Good rebound Harmon by Joe French. To KJ. Oh. Davis really wants that three point shot, hasn't hit one yet. Wide open for three is Thorne, doesn't take it, steps inside, rattles around and out. Offensive board for Walker, and a foul gonna go against Robinson. Yeah, you know, Deshaun did, gave a lot of nice help there, resulting in them getting the open rebound, and sometimes you just can't win them all. It'll be a media time now, but we'll keep it right here. We've got lots to discuss about this game. The Braves 9-2 and two in the SWAC. Their only losses are to Southern and to Jackson State all the way back on the 1st of, the, of January. Yeah, and you know, the last time we played this team, Dylan was not on the roster, you know, healthy. Yeah. Right, he's on the roster, but, it, but he did not play in that game. He didn't even travel to that game. So, so again, maybe he has slipped through their scouting, scouting report cracks because they've left him wide open at that elbow jumper area and he's, he's hit it two, two times. Wildcats have won three of their last four. They swept the Alabama teams, both State and A&M, when they were here two weeks ago, then took one of two on the road, beat Prairie View by two, lost to Texas Southern by five. And really, that game against Texas Southern, we could have had that one. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's why you play the games, Mike. I mean, you know, you can look on paper all the time and see that Team A beats Team B, Team B beats Team C, which leads you to conclude that A is going to crush C when they play, but no. C beats A. That's why you got to play the game. And especially in the SWAC where anybody can beat anybody on any given oh, night. The SWAC it, is such a balanced league. You're and right. And you can take a look at the standings to tell that. Alcorn State 9-2. and two, Grambling and Southern both 8-3. and three, And then a car crash. Pine Bluff and Jackson at 6-5. and five, And then Alabama a and Bethune-Cookman, Prairie View, and Alabama State all at 5-6. and six. Tests the Southern not out of it at 4-7. and seven. There's, you know, 12 teams competing for 8 spots. And they could finish anywhere from 1st to 8. Yeah, every night is a battle in the SWAC conference. So, so little difference between the teams at the top and the teams trailing it up near the bottom of the conference in the standings. Sean Walker, the tallest player that Alcorn State has available, is at the line. He's 6'8", 275 from Houston, Texas, a transfer from McNeese State. Yeah, he looks comfortable at that free throw line. This is the second one. French grabs the miss. Uh, he did play, he's only a red shirt freshman, so he, he, he attended McNeese State University in Louisiana, but he did not play any minutes for the Cowboys. Lucas Garavicious into the game. Yeah, Garavicious in replacing Dylan, Dylan Robertson. Deshaun. And here's Dyson. You know he loves that step back. Oh, just a little bit too strong. Oh, oh, oh. my goodness. So, so that, I think, would that count for Deshaun? Or I, I don't know. Because he was the last one to touch it? I've never seen that before in my entire life. Usually. Both Alcorn players collided and the shot caromed in for what would yeah. considerably be an own goal. Well, they, they gave it to uh, to Dyson. Who yeah. else are you going to give it to? You're yeah. not, you're you not going to give it to Montgomery. Yeah, you have to, right? Steal underneath. Nice hands by Dyson. But it's interesting in the stat sheet, he's going to be 0 for 1 from the 3. But, but he's going to have a two points. <laughs> yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so weird. The shot clock didn't reset, but it's neither here nor there as Bethune-Cookman turned it over. Driving the lane is Wade up and under, no. Tip in, also no. Third attempt, also not oh, good. Nice job by Joe to tip it to Zion. Joe French. Harmon in transition. Wildcats nursing a six-point lead. Oh, yeah, there we French go, pulls up and hits. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was... I was questioning Joe's hesitation, but he fooled me. He was just waiting for the defense to clear to take the shot. 
Uh-oh, look out. Walker gets two defenders in the air and can't hit the layup. Joe French again. Oh, fighting for the rebound. It comes all the way out to Thorne. Thorne throws oh. it up. It's into the hands of Peju. Peju goes to the rim, stripped away. Oh, the foul called against Davis. Davis, nice quick hands, but a little bit of hand across the body as the player came to him. Good call, unfortunately a foul. Listen, th this game, we're only just past the halfway point of the first quarter. We've already gone off the rails. Yeah. There is some wild stuff happening. Long rebounds that nobody can seem to corral. We've already seen the strangest two points that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was fantastic. And yeah. now, uh, Mike Peugeot is going to the free throw line. Peugeot, a sophomore from New Orleans. Yeah. And that's his first, first free throw this season, if I'm correct, because I have him at, uh, no, I'm sorry, three. I'm sorry, he's a 57% free throw shooter. shooter. And I, I was he's 0 for 1 stat. from three. Yeah. And he gets one of two, but it's an offensive rebound for Thorne. Extra possession yeah. for the Braves. Here is DeKedron Thorne. Joshua back in the game with his speed and quickness. He's trouble. He is so fast, Byron Joshua, but he can't hit the layup. Offensive rebound, Marshall, excuse me, Sean Walker with the putback. Yeah, he really, he really exerted his size and strength on that play to get the offensive rebound and put Oh no, I'm, I'm, I was right the first time. Ladarius Marshall, the senior from Jackson, Mississippi in the ball game at the five for the Braves right now. Dyson, step back. Oh, off the mark. The BCU cooling off from three. Now just four of 10. And even 40%. Alcorn one of four from beyond the arc. But where the defensive Bethune-Cookman has done their damage is underneath, holding the Braves to just 31% shooting here in the early going. Joshua stops and hands to Walker for three. No good, French for the other. Re That's the most rebounds I think I've seen French yeah, get in a half yeah, all season. Yeah, French is hitting the glass. Oh, Garrett tried to be fancy and coughed it up. Joshua. Missed another layup. And French battles for the board again. Gets it to Garrett. Joe in the corner. Oh, there you go. Davis. Oh, they missed him. And Davis was open for a second, but they choose to reset with Marcus Garrett. 7.15 to go in the first quarter. BCU still holding on to that six-point advantage. Nice block by Gouda Vicious. And a three from the corner for Deshaun Dyson. He finally hits one. Coach D is drawn up to play to get the open three-pointer on that one for our team. Nice shot. I did say block for Gudovic. I meant screen. Well, he blocked the defender. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hook shot gets nothing but air from Marshall, but it comes straight to Peugeot. Three-pointer, Joshua Good. Yeah, we can't let him get going. Byron Joshua, 10 points a game, shooting 28% from beyond the arc on the season. The sophomore from New Orleans. Got a couple of New Orleans boys on this team, both Joshua, Mike Peugeot, and Willie Anderson, who we haven't seen yet. Ludovicius up top, 10 to shoot. Marcus Garrett's gonna take him. Garrett, ice play, loses the ball. Ludovicius keeps it in the front court with one second, has to let it go. Oh. And it's off to the left. Yeah, he had to shoot that at the end of the clock. Tough shot. Slipping down is Peugeot, but again, it's not a turnover because it comes straight to Joshua. Third attempt for Marshall, and it's good. Man, the Braves just getting a lot of lucky bounces here. Yeah, yeah, that's twice that we just overran the ball thinking that somebody else was going to pick it up, and, and it wound up being an all-corn ball. Garrett turns it over. Running the floor and laying it in is Walker. No correction, that's Thorne. And BCU, tough run over the last couple of minutes. Five-point swing for the Braves. Yeah, we're just not running our offense here. Yeah, Wildcats have turned the ball over four times in this first half. Alcorn only once. Davis. Is this the mm. moment? No, he's still over from three. 
Got a match no, up. No, excuse me, he's one for four. He did hit one. Got a match up. Joshua to Thorne. Thorne around a double screen. Nothing but air on that shot. French, transition three, short. Oh. And Gouda Vicious has unlucky because that ball went right off his chest yeah. and straight to Joshua. BCU somehow with a, still with a two point advantage. And they're scoreless for the last two minutes and 16 seconds. Both teams a little winded. Coming up on a media timeout, we'll fix that. Braves, outside shot, no good. That would have given him a 9-0 run. Dyson, one-on-one -on -one against Joshua. He goes straight at him and scores. Nice hesitation by Deshaun Dyson to create the space and get the bucket. Tough layup, good shot, Deshaun Dyson. Dyson up to five points, French with eight. Nobody on, Alcorn has more than five. But three players have that many, Joshua, Montgomery, and Marshall. Long three for Thorne. Rattles out, nice box out by Gudavicious. Long pass to French. Joe steps into a three. Oh, yeah. oh, he got it. Nice shot, Joe French. French now three of five from beyond the arc. And the Bethune-Cookman lead is back to seven. Good pass ahead by Deshaun Dyson to see Joe French open on their opposite side wing. The Braves players run into each other. Joshua eventually gets it from Walker. Walker in the corner against French. Joe takes away the baseline, slips down. Walker at the free throw line, nowhere to go with it. He just turns around and fires off the mark, but a tip in is good at the horn from Marshall. Mm, lucky bounce by them. Garrett, French, open for three again. Oh, no good. And laying on the ground was Byron Joshua. That must be the wildest rebound he's gotten in his career. But uh, he is tied up. Just goes to show if you're in good position, you don't have to be big, you can get a rebound. <laughs> wow. Media timeout. Wildcats up by five. We'll take a quick breather and come right back for the last 2.59 of the first half. You're watching Bethune-Cookman basketball on the Cat Eye Network. Stay up to date with everything going on at Bethune-Cookman Athletics. Go to www.bcuathletics.com for schedules, stories, and all the latest information on Bethune-Cookman University Athletics. Bookmark it and tell your friends. That's www.bcuathletics.com. Bethune-Cookman with a five-point lead, and they've done it from deep. Six of 16 from beyond, excuse me, from beyond the arc of the first half, and that's almost as many as they make per game. What percentage is that? That's 37.5%. Yeah. Um, from beyond the arc, Alcorn just 28%, two of seven. So I don't, I don't know what the technical foul is on. I think they on, called it on, on Coach Theus. Theus. Uh, well, that's my guess too. So it's technical free throws. I can't see who's at the line. It is Number Montgomery. Five, Montgomery.
So two free throws in possession for Alcorn. And now, did we have the ball when the T came? Or no? Uh, no. It, it was it was their ball. It so was that, their ball. Yeah. So it's not an extra possession, thank goodness for Alcorn, but it is two free points, which gets them within a possession. And uh, you know we've led by. Yeah, Montgomery's we, an 85% yeah. free throw shooter, so good choice to put him on the line. Bethune Cookman has led by as much as nine, 26 to 17, but Alcorn has battled back and a steal. Guess who's in the game? It's Damani McIntyre, and he can't finish. Harmon will clean it up, though. He he went down pretty hard. I don't I don't know what happened. It was uh, no call, but thank goodness Zion was there to lend the hand and get the easy putback. And that's called being a good teammate. Harmon's first points of the game. And he's now defending Byron Joshua. They're gonna get a reach. I believe they're gonna call it on Henderson. Yeah, pushing him out. You know, that's interesting how referees call that, which is the right call. They, they kind of wait to see if the ball's gonna be entered into them when a defender is making the offensive player bend over with force like that. So if he'd have just swung the ball, there wouldn't have been a, wouldn't have been a foul call. I think Bethune-Cookman just called a timeout. It's why we've yeah. got a stoppage of play. Yeah, Henderson's asking the referee what, what exactly happened. And good job by the official to explain it to him, to take the time to explain it to him. So I'll be looking for Dylan Robertson to get some more minutes here. He's only played, so I find him on my stat sheet. He played four minutes, got four points, three rebounds. Yeah, he, you know, and again, he, he's probably, oh, there's, there's the head football coach, Raymond Woody. New football coach here at the game. BCU alum. He was an academic and athletic at All-American. Yeah, so what what better role model for our student athletes than a than a person like him? Great family man, winning coach, great experience. Great to see him back in the maroon and gold of a Wildcats coaching and, and, jersey. And he said all the right things at the introductory press conference uh, yes. a couple of days ago, which you can watch back on the Cat Eye Network. It is archived on our YouTube channel if you want to go watch it. Um, but, he, you know, he wants to, you know, student first, then athletes. And yeah, yeah, I thought one of the greatest comments was that when he said, hey, uh, when he had the team meeting, he, he said, if you have class, you shouldn't be in this room. Go, go get to class. <laughs> I have never heard a head football coach at the D1 level say something like that. Yeah. And the football schedule is out, by the way. Um, and the homecoming game is listed. Homecoming game is listed. That's Texas Southern, the 11th of October. Fifth, um, uh, is it the 11th? The 11th of October, yeah. Isn't the 14th or 15th? Was it the 11th? It's I anyways, think it's the 11th. It's, it's middle of October. It's around there. Yeah. Uh, but again, non-conference games against Memphis and Miami, and then a home game against Savannah State, and then SWAC play starts after that. 33-28, BCU leads by five. Joshua, left-hand dribble this time. Underneath McCorder. They like posting McCorder up for some reason. Kendall goes straight at Henderson, and are they gonna call Damani McIntyre for a foul, they are. And which resets the shot clock. There was only one on the clock, and now they get a fresh 20 baseline in. Yeah, Damani's giving him a quarter all he can handle. Joshua around Harmon, up and under and in. And Coach Thea is not happy with that. It's just a three-point game. Remember, BCU has led by as many as nine. McIntyre trying to get the quarter off him. French, a rare layup from Joe won't go. Out of bounds, jump ball. BCU with the possession arrow. Again, you know, we've seen some unusual plays that that two-point tip, that on-the-floor rebound, and that to me was a little bit of an unusual jump ball call. I thought it would be out of bounds to the Wildcats because their player who held the ball was out of bounds first. If you, so when you're touching the ball out of bounds, it should have been our ball. French comes out for his first breather of the game. Garrett checks back in. It's been a tough start for Marcus. Just three points, one of five from the floor. Yeah, he's had some good opportunities at the bucket. He'll make those as the game goes on, though. Harmon trapped out high. Dyson. He knows he likes to step back oh. from here. McIntyre steps back, though. Misses short. Yeah, had, had to, to get it off. It. Mm -hmm. 
Braves with a chance to tie. Stop and go. Extra pass out to find Montgomery. He drives the lane. Floater oh. no good. Tipped up Come to Dyson. There we go. And Zion grabs it. Harmon tries to get to the baseline. He does. Kicks oh. it all the way out. Offensive foul as he ran into a man in purple and gold underneath. Again, I, I, don't, I don't know the rules for sure, but when you're out of bounds like that, it is not a charge. You cannot well, charge. I think that McCorder was in bounds, and then Harmon pushed him out. And under the basket, which again, when you're in that zone under basket, you can't, you can't charge. That's ECU calls another timeout. Um, there have not been a lot of fouls called in this first half. Nobody in either the, in the single bonus lap, uh, excuse me, Nobody even in the single bonus yet. Six for BCU, three for Alcorn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we, we've got to get our offense. We're a little out of sync right now on the offensive end. Part of that is the substitution. Part of it is Dylan coming back. You know that he's a little, he's not as game speed ready as some of his teammates, but, but that's going to be corrected at halftime. Coach Theus and his coaching staff will make a couple corrections, and they'll come out and it'll be much smoother in the second half. Today's game is all about stopping the clock against all cancers affecting women. As a result of her own 22-year battle with cancer, it was Olympic gold medal winning and Naismith Hall of Fame coach Kay Yao's vision to be part of finding an answer in the fight against cancer. You can join the fight and give hope to a future without cancer by donating today. Visit kyao.com to donate. You can see the pink shirts throughout the audience. The first 200 fans in attendance got pink shirts as this is the play for K day here at Bethune-Cookman. See, let's see what the Alcorn Braves are going to run as we start off. Looks like we're in a 3-2 zone. Some type I mean, of zone. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to that high handoff and let Joshua attack the rim. Yep. They're going to attack from the high points. Then we match up on the first pass. McCorder going right at Robinson. Did he take an extra step? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. you know, they, they really want to go to McCorder. They are really looking to call his his number, which kind of has me puzzled a little bit. You know, he's a 7.5, oh, he's 11.7.5 11, 11 rebounds. So he, so he is scoring at a pretty good clip. He's Dylan in the high post. Dylan hands to Zion. And now Dyson, Dyson rears back and fires and gets it swatted away by Montgomery. There is an Alcorn State Brave down behind the play. Kendall tips it in. The Braves down by just one, but Dontrell McCorder is down on the floor and in some obvious discomfort. Yeah, I don't know what happened. If somebody fell against his leg maybe, or maybe he landed on a foot. You know, there were so many bodies next to each other in there, he probably came down on a foot, somebody else's foot. And By the way, you know, that, that tip-in brought them back to within one point with 12.8 seconds yeah. to go in the first half. So with Dylan Robinson, this is his first game back, and it was around this time last year where he had that season-ending leg injury. In, you know, you just get kind of get flashbacks to that, looking at, at an injury. It was a very similar play, right? It was a play underneath the basket. He landed, he landed wrong, and, and that was the end of his season. And we, we wish now all oh, the yeah. best to, to Dontrell McCorder. Yeah, he, yeah he's, he, he's going to need – well, no, no, he's walking under his own power. At first it looked like he asked for help coming off, but now, he, now he's moving under mm -hmm. his own power. That's always a good sign. He limps to the bench and sits down. We'll see what happens with McCorder. And now we're going to see with him out what they do on offense because they were really trying to go to Dontrell yeah. in the post. Yeah, things were running through him, right? They, the offense was definitely running through him. 12 seconds to go in the first half. BC with a one-point lead. What you don't want to do is turn the ball over and give the Braves a chance to be ahead at the break. And a cheap foul taken by Peugeot. Very odd. They have plenty of fouls to give. That's only their fourth. You know. I'm not sure why he chose well, the foul there. I mean, what the coach is doing here is he's going to keep fouling so we... We can't get into our offense is what he's trying to do. Yeah, just running three seconds off the clock every time, and they know that we, they're not going to shoot free throws because they still need to foul three more times before we're in the bonus. Yeah. I mean, that, hopefully that strategy will come back to haunt him later, that some players will be in foul trouble because of this strategy. Well, interesting tactics brought out by 
head coach Landon Bussey. This time they don't foul, three seconds left. It's Zion, it's mid-range, it's hanging in the air and it's no good. There is a whistle with .4 left. I don't know what the foul is here. So. Oh, they called the foul. Foul on. They're gonna call it on Marshall. And so it's gonna send Zion to the line with .4 to go in the first half. No, oh, they're gonna Robertson to the line. I'm very confused. As we're just trying to work out what's going on right yeah. now. Dylan about a 69% free throw shooter. I'm just not sure why he's at the line because okay. Alcorn still has a foul to give. They shouldn't be a one and one and Zion shot the ball. And they just they just got it straight, yeah. Oh no 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 no! I thought they I thought they, when Dylan walked away from the line, I thought they uh, were pointing to take it out underneath, and that's what the only still thing I can about. think is that the foul total on the board here at Bethune Cookman is wrong, and they actually have seven fouls. As a little bit of confusion reigns in what has been a very odd first half, we had a weird deflection own goal type of basket for that, that counted for Deshaun Dyson. We had a man grab a rebound while he was laying flat on his back. It's just been a, a weird first half, and hopefully Bethune-Cookman can go to the break and, and kind of shore up what's been a shaky last couple of minutes here towards the end. Remember, they led by as much as nine points just a few minutes ago. Yeah, that, that dissipated quickly because of turnovers and missed opportunities and offensive rebounds and putbacks by the break. Let's see what BCU's we've got turned the ball over five times, all corn three. Yeah, so they're they're underneath out of bounds, like we talked about, like we thought it was, Mike. So second chance points, 15 for all corn, only seven for so BCU. They got to they just tip it in. Somebody's got to just tip it in. Point four, no shot. And once again, confusion reigns. They're gonna call halftime. That's it. It's over. And Reggie Theus wants an explanation. Yeah, he was he was standing out of bounds on the catch, or or step back going into his shot and out of bounds. And there, the referees, rightfully so, are saying that that would have been .04 run off the clock. You know, that's not. Yeah, well, and not I'm not time. sure if .4 is enough time for catch and shoot. Well, it, well, I think .3 it has to be a tip, and .4 is enough. But because he caught it and stepped, stepped on, back yeah. and then shot, but it. but I do I do think you're right. I think I think point three is the magic number, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure of that. But that's that seems to be right. Oh. A very odd first half comes to an end. BCU scoreless over the last two minutes and 36 seconds, but they do hold a one point lead. Proud to get a pretty big scalp here today over the league leading all Corn State Braves. We'll take 15 minutes, and when we come back, it's the second half between the Braves and the Wildcats. Right here from Moore Gymnasium, you're watching Bethune Cookman Basketball on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to more Gymnasium on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Michael DeVello, Eric Dennis, talking you through the Alcorn State Braves and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Here are your scoring leaders for the first half. First for Alcorn State, who trails by just one, 33 to 32. Joshua and Montgomery both have seven. Marshall, five. Thorne and Kendall, four. Walker and McQuarter, two. Peugeot won, Wade and Carter played and have not scored. And for Bethune-Cookman, French leads all scores with 11 on three of six shooting from beyond the arc. Davis has six, Dyson five, Robertson four, in only five minutes played, I might add. Garrett three, Harmon and Henderson two. Gutenberg and McIntyre have played but have not scored. Eric, it's close at the half. We're leading at the half. We led at the half at Alcorn when we got it up getting beaten by eight. What has to go right for Bethune-Cookman well, to way, come out with on top of this game? The way I see it, two very simple things. Number one, the Wildcats have to be better at executing their offense. Alcorn was jumping their passing lanes, and that caused us all kinds of trouble when Alcorn jumps the passing lanes. We have to adjust to that, so we just need to get in a better rhythm in our half-court offense. Number two. His name is Marshall. Number 32 came off the bench and he hurt us with his size presence, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. We have to neutralize him. Even He's only on the season averaging 2.2 rebounds. What did he have in that first half, Mike? He had six rebounds, that leads everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, see, he really asserted himself and we cannot let that happen. So. So when we go to these odd lineups that haven't played together very much, we just have to execute better, and we will. I know we will, because I'm sure that's what the Wildcats under Coach Theus talk about at the half, is what to do in execution in this second half. Let's see what happens. Starters back on the floor. I have not seen Dontrell McCorder yet. He was the Alcorn State Brave that went down with the injury late in the first half. We hope he is okay. Braves in the purple and gold start with the ball, almost a steal from Harmon, but he pokes it out of play. You know, Zion, quick hands, nice, nice job to disrupt their offense. 26 on the clock. I think Bethune-Cookman really has got to start knocking down some more threes. There were six of 16 in the first half, but did not hit a three in the final six minutes of the opening frame. Here's a three from the wing, and it's good from Otis Walker. Yeah, Walker, nice job of them running their offense. That young man is a 30% three-point shooter. He knocked that one down like a, like a pro. Which is right where you want to be, but right off the jump, it's a two-point lead for the Braves. It's their first lead since 7-2. to two. Back with uh, 16 minutes to go in the first half. That pass is intended for French, but he was looking the wrong way. Yeah, he and it be, is the... Yeah. Sixth turnover of the game for Bethune Cookman. And Marcus Garrett knocks it out of bounds with good anticipation to slow down their secondary break. BCU scoreless for the last 236 across the halftime interval. Had a chance to score there at the end, but had a three pointer ruled out because. I believe it was Dyson who was in the corner. It took too long to get the shot off when there was only 0.4 seconds left. Nice little fake by Garrett. French open for three, tries to respond, can't do it. Rebound, Kendall. And we started slow in the first half. I don't think we could afford to start slow in the second half. Garrett skies for the board off the missed three from Montgomery. French puts his shoulder into Thorne. Then backs out. Harmon, who only has two points. Oh. And he misses that one. That's a shot that usually he gets every time. Yeah, he, normally he banks that. He decided not to bank that. Little underneath shovel pass towards Kendall. Gets a third opportunity for Montgomery, and he's fouled. And it is Garrett who receives the foul. That's his first. Yeah, Dylan Robertson into the game to try and stop those offensive rebounds. Offensive rebounds, 9-6. to six. The Braves lead in that statistical department, but it, it's felt like more. Yeah. And again, Montgomery is an excellent free throw shooter at 85%. 15 second chance points for the Braves, only seven for Bethune-Cookman as Robertson comes back in. And I think you're going to see Dylan play at 100% for maybe five or six minutes and then come out like he did in the first half. Just try to get 
game speed back in his back in his legs, but he was excellent in the first half. Only played five minutes, but got four points and three boards. Alcorn up four. Davis way out on top. Cycled around to French. Leaps in the lane. Garrett coughs it up. Diving on the ground. Rugby scrum, jump ball. Possession arrow should favor the Wildcats, and it does. Davis, nice heads up play to get on the floor to tie that up. He knew it was our possession arrow, and he did. He went in there really slow so he wouldn't get the foul to tie that ball up. Good, good smart play by that young man. But just, again, Wildcats are having a lot of trouble driving to the lane. Only eight on the clock. I hope they see that. Up! Oh! We've missed this! We've missed the Robinson rim rocking dunk, and we got a big one right there. Yeah, and that was created, believe it or not, Joe French drawing the attention, cleared that lane out because everybody was focused on him, and, and off of his wake, Dylan came and got the alley-oop on the inbound. Robinson battling down low with Kendall. Montgomery dancing against Davis. Baseline jumper, nice contest by Davis, but he's, he's gonna say he got him on the wrist. Late whistle by the referee. Probably the right call, but a little late. You know, Montgomery, I, I mean, he, he totally went away from their offensive structure and decided that he was going to get a shot up like in a rec league game. I don't, I don't understand what he was doing, but it wound up working out for him to get him to the line because he's such a good free throw shooter. Montgomery leads Alcorn with nine. Chance to make it double figures. And pushes you know, the and he's lead back to three. Yeah, he's such a good free throw shooter. Look, they pulled everybody off the line. All, all the Alcorn players are on the other end ready to play defense because he's so, such a good free throw shooter. I think he's perfect from the line tonight. Yeah. He is four of four. Well, he's six of six. because he Yeah, made six it. of six, correct. They go to Robertson, and it went right through his hands. And, and Alcorn that, keeps the ball in play. Yeah, that's game and speed. And now Dillon falls down. That's, again, game speed, him getting back in game condition. Robertson tries to close out, but it's not enough as Odest Walker, excuse me, Odest Walker hits his second three of the half. And from down three to down seven, Garrett pulls up. Off the rim, nothing falling for the Wildcats. Yeah, good challenge by them on the defense to, to adjust that shot. In the corner, Braves ball as Garrett stepped on the line. And again, the Wildcats just on the offensive end. It doesn't look like they're getting their shot. No, we're, we're not in sync yet. Corner three, too strong. Harm in the rebound. Oh. Long stretch pass to French. He corrals it off his fingertips and floats it into the baseline. Nice lead pass by Zion to stretch Joe out. Joe stops. One hand runner. Two points. Joe French. And hopefully that can inspire a little bit of the offense to get going here. Because in Lorman, the Braves put a 50-burger up on the Wildcats in the second half. We cannot oh. allow that to happen again, and it's three for three from triple for Audist Walker. Yeah, and he's a 30% free throw, 30% three-point shooter on the season, but he's shooting it well tonight. And that one was from a long ways away. Harmon to Davis, he takes a three, and he connects. Davis with his second triple of the ball game. Nice shot, nice offense by Davis. Zion creates the space, gives it to Davis, wide open. We know Davis can hit those. And he shot a five three-pointers tonight. Good help by Marcus. But mm. it doesn't stop yeah. Jeremiah Kendall from hitting the runner, and it's yeah. all offense all the time Mar right now. Marcus came in and shut it down, and then he left, allowing the offensive player to make his move. Long pass, catch and shoot, Garrett, good for three. And this is what the Wildcats need to get back to. So right now it looks like we have a three-point shooting contest going on. On the season, we're a better three-point shooting team than they are. They're, they're, they shoot seven points under us. They're 29, we're 36. Well, right now they're shooting 38%. Both teams actually shooting 38% from beyond the arc. 
And right now, it's Honest Walker who's the main culprit, stopping and scoring is mm. Jeremiah Kendall. Four straight points for him. Yeah, Dylan doesn't need to go that far out on that player. He's not going to shoot that. But when he got his body against him, he used the, his, his defense against him to spin off of him. Zion around a screen. Davis, that'll be a long two. It doesn't go. Robertson battling for the rebound, but it comes down to Kendall. Jeremiah Kendall listed at 6'6", six, six, but he's playing larger than life right now. Robertson at 6'10", should be the, I mean, it is the tallest player on the floor. But I'm guessing part of head coach Landon Bussey's team talk at halftime was how to deal with Robertson. They are trying to attack Dylan Robertson right now, let me tell you. They are looking to go against him. Montgomery step back for three. Rainbowed at two strong. Garrett keeps his feet in bounds. Cross court pass. French catch and shoot for three. Rolls out. Put back Garrett. Nice play by Marcus Garrett to gather the... The loose ball, get the break going, get it to Joe, and then put Joe's miss back in for two. BCU down by just three. Alcorn three of their last four shots have gone down. Another nice pick and roll this time for Kendall. He scored six straight. And again, they're attacking Dylan. Like I said, that was directly at Dylan. Miss, miss play by Dylan, and they got the two. Six point game. Harmon to French. Joe, baseline stops and draws the contact. Nice, nice offense by Joe to get the defender in the air and get to the line for two free throws. First media time out of the second half. We'll take it with him. It's Joe French to the line when we come back trying to erase the six point deficit that, all, deficit that Alcorn has over BCU right here on the Cat Eye Network. Stay up to date with everything going on at Bethune-Cookman Athletics. Go to www.bcuathletics.com for schedules, stories, and all the latest information on Bethune-Cookman University Athletics. Bookmark it and tell your friends that's bcuathletics.com. Out of the timeout, Joe French is going to line to shoot two free throws and oh no. misses the first one short. Now, is it tougher? to shoot free throws out of a timeout or, or a lengthy stoppage? Not for somebody like Joe. He's such a good free throw shooter. He just misjudged that one. It happens, you know, it happens. That was only his second free throw miss of the season as he's going to take a seat replaced by Dyson. Yeah, and Gary Vicious into the game, which you mentioned during the timeout. Yeah, Gouda Vicious in replacing Dylan Robertson. As, as good as Robertson is, you can tell he is a little bit gassed. Nice defense by Deshaun to cut off number two. That's Byron Joshua in the corner. Works back to the top. Joshua 
drives, kicks, three by Thorn, way off the mark. And Harmon saves it from going out of bounds. Let's see what we got. Harmon to Davis, extra pass. Deshaun Dyson in the corner, doesn't get the roll. Garrett dives on the ball. Davis up and under and scores. Beautiful, smart play by Marcus Garrett to make that happen, to dig up under the rebound and knock it loose. Davis gathers it in for the easy layup reverse. Garrett diving on the floor like he's a member of the volleyball team. Yeah, he did a nice job besides knocking it away to, to lay out to knock it to Davis. Yeah, beautiful. Pump fake from Joshua. He gets it back from Thorne. And here, here they come, high pick. Iso play. Joshua throws it off of Dontrell McCorder's hands and out. Good to see Dontrell McCorder back on the floor after yeah. he picked up that injury yeah. late in the first half. And Deshaun Dyson is giving Rice and Joshua all kinds of trouble with his defense. He's really done a nice job of cutting him off. In fact, in fact, he's going out of the game right now. Yeah, Joshua the leader on this Alcorn team in both assists and steals. Yeah. And also averages 10 points a game. And into the game is another player Mike, back in the game. Uh, yeah, Mike Peugeot. Pe Peugeot. Dyson rises up. Back iron no good, just a little bit too strong. Yeah. BCU back within three. Good take, though. Nice offense that time by the Wildcats. Just came up with nothing. Let's see what we can do on the deep. BCU shooting 42% from the floor and holding Alcorn to just 38. But it's been a hot start to the second half for the Braves that's given them this lead. 10 on the shot clock. Oh, nice. And a nice block by KJ. Davis rips it away from his opposite number, Thorne. And now a foul called as Garrett goes hard to the hoop. Great Mark. defense by KJ Davis. Oh, yeah, nice steal. Then he gathered on the, on the dribble out, gave it to Marcus, who drew the foul to go to the line for two shots. Media timeout will keep it right here. Today we honor the courageous women in our community and we stand with you in your fight and we are inspired by you. Your strength and courage propel us to have a quality of spirit that enables us to face difficulty without fear. You lift us up so we can lift others up. You are not alone, we are in this together. Of course, this is the Play 4K Breast Cancer Awareness Night. You know, on that, on that last play, Mike, I noticed, you know, you noticed that it was really Two on one, Zion was on the other side of the floor with Marcus, but their defender did a really nice job of not letting Marcus use his teammate to get it to get an open shot. And then the other player came in to block it, and that's who fouled Marcus. So so good defense, better offense by Marcus, resulting in two free throws that time. And really, it's been good defense for both sides. I mean, you, you look at Alcorn shooting right now 37%. On the season, opponents for Bethune-Cookman are shooting 44%. Yep. So that's a nice defensive performance by the Wildcats. Wildcats shooting 41%, they average just exactly that, 41. Yeah, yeah. and we're at 11.31. The guests, Alcorn has a 51 to 48 lead. Let's see what happens with these free throws. Maybe, let's see if uh, Coach Diaz tries maybe a a token press or some full court defense. I don't know, you know, they've used it in the past. In the past, this is kind of an opportunity to see how they're gonna react to see if you're gonna use it later on in the game. But I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but let's see what happens after these free throws. Yeah, so BCU has not scored since the French free throws just about two minutes ago, but neither has Alcorn State. Both teams scoreless the last two minutes. Yeah, it's been hot and cold for both teams, hasn't it? I mentioned in the in the women's game, kind of a stop-start stuttering game, and it got better in the second half. This game is the opposite. The first half was really well flowing and both teams in their offense, and the second half has gotten a little bit chippier, yeah. a little bit slower. Yeah, there for a while, both teams were battling threes, if you remember back and forth, right? Those threes were dropping. Yeah. Garrett at the line. Oh. And he misses the first one. He's a 68% free throw shooter. Yeah. And, and you know, he could be a 75-80% free throw shooter, he's such a good shooter. And he gets that one to go off the front of the rim. VCU from the line just uh, three of five. No, ex excuse, yeah, just three of five from the free throw line today. The Wildcats show zone and then on the first pass, they go into man to man. 
Joshua spins around a screen set by Kendall. Calling a play and moving the chess pieces around the board. Now he explodes. They're gonna have to help Deshaun down there. Robertson back in the game and does enough to put off Kendall and he misses the shot. Sean blew his shoe, shoe came off on the other end, now he's back in play. Harmon waiting for Ra uh, Dyson to get back in, and man, Reggie Theus not happy about something he's seeing. Well, he, he broke the play, Zion broke the play. Nine on the shot clock, Garrett. Steps into a three, good, off the back of the rim. Yeah, that, when he gets in rhythm like that, he's so dangerous, good shot. Guda Vicious about to check back in. Just about the halfway point of this second half. Joshua gets rejected by Robinson. Yeah, yeah. That's Dylan at his finest. He is such a leaper, long, and can really block some shots. He showed it there. Man, it's so good seeing Dylan Robinson back on the floor. And this team really needed it. Yeah, they we, were down yeah. a lot of bodies yeah. for we, so much of this season. And the big bodies, all the big bodies. Three-pointer from straight yeah. on, good from DeKedron Thorne. And restoring the lead for the visitors. It's back to two points. BCU had the lead there for a second. 52-51, but not anymore. Throwing it up, Robinson tried to tip yeah, it in. Good call, ref, good and call. And they're gonna call Walker for a push. I think he used his hips he did. to just kind of push Robinson out of the way. He did, he, he knew the play, he saw the play and he went into Robinson on purpose to foul, you know, not, not to hurt him, but you know, to block the, block the play. And when the pass comes, it's an automatic foul. Interesting chess move from uh, head coach Bussey for Alcorn State. He puts Marshall back in. They're gonna say it's not a shooting foul. So should it be 20 or 30 on the shot clock? It's Mark? 30 on the shot clock. Oh, no, they just changed it to 20. Baseline in to Davis. Oh! Oh, Davis threw it right away. He's he, got to take that shot. He knew where Garrett was. He threw it to him, and Joshua just takes full advantage. He's, he's got to take that. When you're that close to the bucket, he's got to go up. Everybody expects you to shoot that. And now Gudavicious gets up. He sat back down. I'll tell you why Coach Theus does that in a minute. Garrett gets his shot blocked by Marshall. Yeah, off, Quickly off the other way for a jam is Audist Walker. And a quick 7-0 run for Alcorn State out of the timeout. And Coach Theus wants a timeout as well. So some, some coaches, when they sub like that, they don't want the other player to know that they're being subbed for. So, so, so Coach Theus called him back and then sent him back. Does that make any sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't affect the on-court player's play at all. Now it's, the on-court play has heavily favored the Braves right now. BCU took the 52 to 51 lead and then Alcorn has exploded for seven straight points yeah. on the back of a couple of turnovers. Yeah, bad turnovers too. Well, well, Marcus went in for a bad off-balance shot, had it blocked, they ran out and got, got a bucket. And then the, uh, what was the other uh, run out? Davis with the turnover, he, he tried to kick it out to Garrett. That's and right. Joshua yeah. was just standing right Where away. He should have taken the shot, that's right, yeah. Eight turnovers for BCU, only four for Alcorn. They have really taken care of the ball tonight. The Braves average 14 turnover, or 13, 13 turnovers a game, but man, that's best in the smack, but they are really hanging on to the ball tonight. Yeah, yeah, and again, we're, a, we're an average 13 turnover a game team, and they're, just a little bit higher than us. So again, what, you know, what we talked about earlier in the broadcast, very similar team statistics for these two teams. Alcorn State has seven steals to Bethune-Cookman's only two. And McIntyre has one and Davis has one. Yeah, we need, we need a good offensive possession here to stop their momentum. We have to come up with something good, whether it be drawing a foul, getting to the line or scoring a bucket two or three. We need it. And the last, I think, four points from Bethune-Cookman have all come from the free throw line. Yeah. 
And Lucas is in the game. Oh, no, excuse me. It was the Marcus Garrett three. And then before that, the previous four points yeah. all came from the free throw line. Joe French also back in. French to Zion. Harmon pulls up. He hits it. Zion Harmon finally. And that's the first time he's been able to get into a good rhythm off his dribble, and it results in a three-point bucket for Bef Zion Harmon. Before that, he was only one for two from the field, Zion Harmon, an uncharacteristically quiet day. Yeah, and that runner that he missed, too, uncharacteristically missed that one as well. But that was a nice shot by him. Joshua pulls up and misses. Chance for the Wildcats here. In transition, French on the baseline. Floater, oh, oh my goodness. Just some of these mid-range shots that the Wildcats hit so often have not been falling tonight. Yeah, that's a tough break for the Wildcats. That would have really helped bring us to within one. That we're down three that with, and they got the ball. Joshua kick out. Thorne for three, no good. Davis can't get the rebound, and Walker puts it in. And you know, that, that rebound should go to Marshall, even though he didn't gather it. He's the one that slapped it against the glass so that his teammate could get the rebound because he knew he couldn't get it. Both teams are tied, 33 overall rebounds, but 12 to eight on the offensive glass for Alcorn. Dyson gets it blocked by Marshall out of bounds, BCU ball. And we're gonna see James Henderson come back in replacing Gudavicious. Oh, it is a media timeout, excuse me, it's the under uh, eight media timeout. We've seen a rotating cast of characters at the five for BCU tonight. Nobody really settling in against their big men. Yeah, well, you know, here's what they do. You know, Alcorn does a nice job. If, if, if we're bigger, they're gonna get it to that post in the high post, which gives them room to operate against our big. They took real good advantage of Dylan Robinson a while ago in, in that situation, and they've gotten good things out of that consistently in this game. When they have somebody bigger against somebody smaller, then offensively, they put that guy down on the block, and that's just called basic basketball. BCU men's basketball is right back here Monday evening against Jackson State at 8 p.m. Make sure to come support your Wildcats men's basketball team against the Tigers on Monday night right here at Moore Gymnasium. Or if you're further afield and able to come to the campus, you can catch us live on the Cat Eye Network. But I definitely would recommend coming down and seeing a game in person. Yeah, it's, it's a great atmosphere. You know, we've talked about DJ Wildchild is here at every game. He's got the... Fans pumping, the music pumping, the cheerleaders are dancing. We've got concessions from the volleyball team. We've got the fans rocking, and it is a great family atmosphere. So bring the whole family out. Kids, grandma, get in the station wagon, the minivan. Come on down to more gymnasium on the Bethune-Cookman University campus. BCU down by just five, and it's important to not let this get away from them. If we're in within a couple possessions in the last few minutes, I think we can fight through it and yeah. win a game, a close game. But if, if we let what happened in Lorman at the Alcorn State home leg of this home and home set happen where they just kind of run away with it in the second half, it, it's not gonna be a pretty sight come the end of the game. And immediately a turnover off the inbounds pass as Garrett couldn't find French. In transition, laying it up and in is Thorne. Yeah, exactly what you don't want out of the timeout is a turnover leading to a run out layup by Alcorn. Ninth turnover of the game for BCU. And they have that, uh, Alcorn has that many points off turnovers. Garrett, slip pass to Davis. Underneath gets the foul call. I think it's gonna be against Marshall. Yeah. Davis may have laid that off to Henderson. Henderson would have dunked that one home for mm -hmm. sure, but he drew the foul. He drew the foul, good play. But the Wildcats only 50% for the line tonight, three of six. All three times they've gotten there, it's been one of two. Get on balance. Yeah. And Get that's balance. the first time in the ball game the Wildcats have hit the front end of a two-shot penalty. Yeah, when Kevin sticks in there like that, and, and, he, and he's set and balanced like that. He's such a good free throw shooter. Damani McIntyre back on the floor. Only played two minutes of the first half. 
picked up a foul and came right out. So I wonder if there's a, a small injury problem with the no, body. No, 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 not at all, not at all. You know, you know, Dylan is taking his minutes tonight. You know, normally those would have been McIntyre's minutes, but, but those are now, you know, his minutes. And one for two again from the free throw line for the Wildcats. Joshua guarded by Dyson. Up on top, Walker. Thorne in front of his own bench. Around the screen, that's a tough shot, it's short. Another offensive rebound for Alcorn, but he can't get it to go, did Kendall. But it's a strip, and another strip. The ball ping-ponging yeah. around like it's the Olympics. Damani slapped that one away. McIntyre open for three, catch and shoot off the mark. VCU has slipped down to just 43% from beyond the arc. We're shooting upwards of 50% in the first half. Joshua steps into a three, missed it long. Mm. Another offensive rebound as Kendall tried to run it off Dyson. And it's a, another steal for McIntyre. What is happening right now? Backdoor pass, Garrett, layup, no good. Nothing falling for the Wildcats. Garrett tries to get in there and get a steal and can't do it. Well, those are missed opportunities that like, when the airplane takes off when it, with an empty seat, you can't get those back. Somehow we're still out shooting the Braves in percentage wise, 40 to 38. Traveling violation, give the ball back to the Wildcats, but the Braves have had 63 shot attempts to our 53. Yeah, that, how many offensive rebounds do they have? They? Uh, they have 15 to our nine. Yeah, so there's some of those possessions that have led to, uh, to, to more shots for them. And then, and then I think we're probably a little ahead in turnovers as well. Garrett comes out. This is an interesting lineup we've got right now. We've got KJ Zion. Damani McIntyre, James Henderson, and Deshaun Dyson. I don't think we've seen this specific five on the floor together so yeah, far. Yeah, Zion's got to take the scoring load on this. He tries to do it with a floater from the baseline, and he, or two from the free throw line, and he got it plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, that's, that's why Coach Theus has that li lineup in, because he knows Zion can score, and this group will get him the ball. And even though it's been a cold night for Harmon, only five points, he can at any moment just take over a game. Yeah, and Deshaun Dyson too, you know, has only got five. He's, uh, you know, he's such a good scorer as well. He, you know, he hits those step back threes when the defense plays him soft. We haven't seen that yet. Montgomery comes back in for Alcorn. Three Braves in double figures. Walker leads the way with 15, Kendall 10, and Montgomery 11. Nobody's got a double-double yet. Yep. Three actually in double figures for the Wildcats as well. Garrett and Davis with 12 and French with 14. No. Oh, oh hey, yeah. Hey, at the steal. It's the fast hands of McIntyre. He goes to the lane. He gets the roll. You know, that was an excellent move by him to go to the other side of the basket to get the easy layup. And just like that, it's a one-point game. And Alcorn throws the ball out of bounds. So Coach Diaz going into that press has really shooken them up. They have not reacted well. It's thrown them out of balance. First time we've shown the full court press all game and the Braves didn't know how to react. And right back into the game is Walker and Marshall to try and settle things down for the Braves. VCU a chance to take the lead, 5.21 to go. Crowd getting a little rowdy here at Moore. Zion against his opposite number, McQuarter. Harmon drives, stripped. BCU ball as it was off of Joshua. Harmon was looking for the foul there, 16 on the shot clock. Yeah, nice turn in the corner by Zion, just couldn't get it up in the, into the hoop. Davis, wide open for three. Can he hit it? Yes, he can. That's his third three of the contest. And we're back up two. Nice play. Nice inbound by Zion to get the ball to Davis. A 9-0 run for Bethune-Cookman to retake the lead. Yeah, and because of the substitution, I think, I think the Braves were a little mixed up on who was guarding Davis. To the lane. Davis does a good job, but... Man, you can't really guard Ladarius Marshall 
He's really hurting us. On another offensive putback. You know, Henderson will shut him down, though. Henderson will, will neutralize him here in a minute. And that's a tough spot for a freshman in James Henderson trying to guard someone like Marshall. Yeah, but that's his forte. Davis, round the screen, pitches to French. In the corner for three. Oh, he's found his scoring stroke again. So that's a, that's a set play by Coach Theus for Davis to turn that corner and get the ball to Joe in the open court, in the corner. His favorite shot, right? You've said that many times this year. He loves that corner three, does Joe French. There it is. He loves that corner three, word for word. Stopping is Joshua. Escape dribble three, no good for Thorne. Long rebound to French. French did a nice, nice heady play to slow it down, to gather that ball and set, get something set on our offensive end. Good job, Joe. Wildcats a chance to turn the screws up three with four, uh, excuse me, 335 to go. It's an ISO play for Zion, shoveled into the corner. It's Dyson for three. Oh, it's a three-point shooting contest, and Dyson does the French celebration. Again, another set play for Zion to create. If he can get to the basket, he will. If not, you have a player in the corner open for the three. Nice shot. Good screen by Henderson, too, to get him open. It is loud inside Moore Gymnasium. A six-point lead for the Wildcats. And out of bounds, Alcorn ball will go to the final media timeout. Good hands by Davis to stop that drive and knock it out of bounds so that we can reset our defense. It's a 6-0 run for the Wildcats. They have a six-point lead at the final media. We'll step away, and when we come back, it's the thrilling finish to this exciting game. Can the Wildcats sweep another doubleheader? Stay right here to find out right on the Cat Eye Network. Welcome back to more Gymnasium. Michael Torello, Eric Dennis. This game has gone back and forth and back and forth. Both teams have had the lead five times. There have been three ties. Right now it's a six point BCU lead with 3.04 to go. But as we saw in the first game, Eric, there's, it's not over until triple zeros are on that clock. Boy, you said it. You said it like a champion, Mike. You know. All right, eight seconds left, Mike. You're the head coach. What are you running? <laughs> uh, man, I, I won uh, a screen and three or a pick and pop for either uh, Thorne or Kendall yeah, or call. Walker. Good call. They go underneath. Oh, and McIntyre almost got the block, but he got the back of the hand of DeKedron Thorne. Yeah, uh, you know. I think you can hear that the crowd doesn't agree with that call. No. That's McIntyre's second foul. Robertson came back in at the last timeout replacing Henderson. We'll see if he's in the rest of the way. So, so Coach Theus is talking to the referee about the call. And the referee's talking back to him from across the court. They're motioning. I mean, remember, Reggie got a, has a tech already from the first half. So he's got to be careful. Well, but what the referee explained is was, was uh, Damani pushed him in the back, and that didn't happen. If he would have said he hit his hand, that would have been a better, safer argument. McIntyre comes out, French back in. Four-point game, 3.02 to go. Wildcats have to keep up the scoring pressure. They've been great. They've hit three of their last four three-point attempts. Yeah, four-point lead with just under three minutes to go in the game. And it's been different players each time. Throwing it up, they ran that same set to try and get a lob for Robertson, and he says, I can't get to the basket because I'm being held. Yeah. 
And yeah, Coach Theus not happy with the call and a chance for the Braves to pull this within a possession. Yeah, tough break for the Wildcats for sure. Byron Joshua, he's got nine points. And he's been the orchestrator. Floater missed from Kendall. Finally a good rebound, good box out by Davis. Wildcats gonna wanna slow this one yeah. down. Here comes that five, four low where Zion can create for his teammates. Harmon one on one against Byron Joshua. He goes by Joshua and he gets fouled. Yeah. Zion is so crafty at drawing the foul and you saw it right there on that play that he just has that speed, quickness and skill to get the defense off balance to gain the offensive edge to get to the line and That's there he goes. Devin Carter who draws the foul. That's actually his first involvement in the stats book uh, at all today and man. The free throw line not being kind to the Wildcats again. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're what are we for the game? 50% exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're a lot better free throw shooting team than that, that's for sure. Oh no, excuse me, um, Davis hit two of two last time, so we are now 55%. Not much difference. But yeah, we are a much better free throw shooting team than that on the season, averaging 70%. Yeah. Harmon sits. This will probably be his last trip to the bench before well, the Co final Coach stretch. Well, Coach is back to that defense for offense by putting Damani in the game for Zion. So a better defender. If we can get a break, Zion will come back in on the offensive end. 120 seconds to go. Wildcats with a five-point lead. Joshua drives, gets it ripped away by McIntyre, but he gets it right back and finishes with the up and under. Timeout, head coach Landon Bussey and the All Court State Braves. Yeah, you know, that was an unfortunate break by us that we played great D and got the block, but but they gathered the ball. Joshua gathered it, and before anybody else could react with his quickness, laid it in on the other side. Landon Bussey in his third season as the head coach of All Corn State, former assistant coach at Xavier and Prairie View, so in conference. And he has been great as Alcorn yep. State head coach. In his first two seasons, 20 conference wins, two all-conference players, a first regular season SWAC title in 20 years, and he was last season's SWAC Men's Coach of the Year. What are we looking at for timeouts for each team, Mike? What's our, what's our? Both teams have two left. Two left with, with 152 to go in the game. That could be critical, those timeouts are gold right now for both teams. Well, what's super important for the Wildcats is they got a score on this possession. They cannot have another empty possession. Up by three, they gotta keep this two possession buffer. Yeah, let's see what we go to. Let's see if Alcorn comes out in some kind of full court pressure or not. Yes, yes they yeah, are, they we are. need to react. And remember the women's team for BCU struggled against the full court press and almost let that game get away from them against Alcorn. Oh, no. And it's tipped, and it's out of bounds. Oh, it's it's all corn ball. I thought it was tipped, but apparently it wasn't. So we did not react. The Wildcats, when they showed press, we have to go help Zion and not leave him out there on the island by himself. And that's exactly what happened. Braves a chance to tie the game down by three with 145 to go. Zion comes out. Then again, defense Garrett comes for back offense. In. Yeah, yeah, Zion a little better. Uh, Garrett a little better defender. And... Oh, the clock didn't start. Or reset, <laughs> reset. So Shot we'll, clock did not reset. So we'll do it again. They let the ball roll and Joshua picks it up. The match up, match up, match up, match up, match up, match up. Joshua drives, floater, back iron no good, and it's caromed in. I didn't, I'm not sure, even sure that Kendall, was intentional. Yeah, Ken, Kendall claims it was, it probably was. He had, he had a nice running jump at the ball and tipped it in. BCU with the slimmest of margins, and Coach Theus wants to take one of his two remaining timeouts, 71-70. So BCU used a big run to take a lead, and now all corners come right back at him with a 6-0 run of their own to pull within one. Yeah, critical possession. we got to have something good with a one-point lead out of this offensive possession. And Coach Theus smartly uses a timeout to make sure that all the Wildcats are on the same offensive page on this possession with just 126 left in this game and a thin one-point lead. 
checking out what's happening for Bethune Cookman softball. They're in action right now against Stony Brook, currently trailing six to five in the top of the fifth, looking for their first win of the year. Yeah, we're, we're, they're down in uh, Boca, right? Yep, at the FAU Invitational. FAU's. Next weekend, they'll be in Jacksonville at the Jacksonville Invitational to take on um, Penn State and the host Dolphins. Yeah. So, so this get, is, get th up there to Jacksonville and go support your Wildcats. And this is the time of year where those northern teams come down to Florida and stay for a long time and play a lot of games down here in Florida with the warm weather. Into the backcourt, Zion picks it up. Critical possession for the Wildcats. Robinson has it up top. High post, Davis. He goes straight at the defense and scores plus one. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful play by Coach Theus out of the timeout, and the Wildcats execute it perfectly. Dylan Robinson feeds Davis in the top of the key area, who drives it down the middle, scores the bucket, and at the line. And now we get the defense back in with McIntyre and Garrett. It's almost like a hockey line change or, or um, good call. in yeah, in, good, um, good in lacrosse, you have offensive and defensive players that will switch in every time possession changes. Yeah, yeah, good call on that. For all you lacrosse fans I've, out there. I've made a lacrosse reference. What, am, what is this world coming to? Is that lacrosse Wisconsin or lacrosse <laughs> the game? <laughs> lacrosse the game. Davis, massive free throw, hits it. Four point lead restored for Bethune Cookman. And do they even play lacrosse in lacrosse Wisconsin? I, I don't know, but I bet they might. <laughs> Huge defensive possession for the Wildcats. Dyson oh, that was doesn't do enough. Good offense. And Joshua scores. Timeout. Alcorn. Yeah. Now both teams down to one timeout. It's a two-point game, 105 to go. Alcorn called that timeout, so we're yeah. down to one each. Is what one we're each. Doing? Yeah. Yeah, that you know, that was just tremendous one-on-one -on -one offense by that young man. There was nothing that the Wildcats could do. Maybe maybe Robinson could have come over a little earlier from the weak side and gotten a block, and that's the only way that play was going to be stopped. Yeah, but uh, you know, one on one with Deshaun Dyson, I think Joshua was going to win that battle more times than not. He is such a crafty player and, and just a sophomore as well. I remember from New Orleans, a two time state champion at Crescent City Christian, over 3,000 points in his high school career. Yeah, so free throws coming down this last minute and five are probably going to be very important here both teams very similar team free throw percentages Alcorn Braves 71.6 on the season Bethune Wildcats 70.5 on the season yeah but on the night the Braves 83 percent the Wildcats just 58 yeah then that's and that's Montgomery who's an 85 percent free throw shooter has gotten to the line a whole bunch of times he is six for six from the free throw line tonight yeah, yeah. And then, and then Joe French uh, uncharacteristically missed the front end of a two-shot foul. Yeah. Only his second miss of the season. Wildcats show pressure. French goes to the bench in a possession where you really need some points here. Yep. Can't turn the ball over. Zion escapes. Davis in the front court now, long pass for Garrett. And then Zion resets. 16 to shoot, 50 on the game clock. Harmon surveys what's in front of him. Garrett, back oh, no. it the down and turned it over. Joshua against Harmon with a chance to tie, he does. 74 to 74, 35 seconds left. Timeouts, Alcorn. Timeout Alcorn. And that's the second time that we've driven and tried to kick to the top, and Joshua's been right there to pick it off. Marcus can sometimes get off balance, and when he does, we rarely get good offense out of it, and there is an example of it where he just goes and puts his body on the defender, and the defender doesn't, doesn't meet his contact, and it causes him to get off balance. And it was good defense by them not to not to not to accept the contact. Yeah. So 35 seconds to go, five second difference between the shot clock and game clock. What do you do here if you're Coach Theus? Do you go quick and try and get a two for one? Or I, I think I, I think there won't be any strategy like that, Mike, although although that's a that's a very great question. I think they're just gotta take the best shot 
when they get it. The first best yeah. shot. When because they get right, it. because right now, Alcorn's going to have the final possession. Where are we at on the one and ones? What's what's that looking um, like? Um, so Bethune Cookman is in the single bonus, and they are Alcorn. Yeah. Alcorn is not close. See, so so this possession is even more important because if we don't score and we got a foul. No, no, the other way, the oh, other way. It, we yeah. will be shooting. They are, we've only committed three fouls and a half. I got you. Yeah. yeah that, and that's what I, but no, I was saying that. Yeah. That if, that if they take the lead and we need to get them to shoot free throws. We can foul. Well, we no, can't no, foul, yeah. No, we, we can, but we got we to gotta commit four fouls. That's going to run a lot of clock is yeah. what I'm trying to say. So, but it does bode well for us if we can score on this next possession. Sure. That, that, no question where you can gamble on the defensive end with the score. But without it, if we're behind, that comes out to be a negative for us. I thought the last possession was the most important of the game for BCU. This is the most important possession of the game for BCU. Davis trapped in the corner. Got to get the ball away. He does to Dyson into the front court. What do the Wildcats draw up here? French is in the game. He's hit four threes tonight. Harmon double teamed and it's old. Oh, Bethune Cooper got bailed out because DeKedron Thorne almost took that away. Yeah, nice run and jump by the Alcorn Braves to throw us off balance a little bit. 11 seconds on the game clock. 16, I'm sorry, on the shot. 16.6 .6 on the game. Harmon. Double teamed. Dyson puts up a wild shot. It's short. It's short. Oh, I don't, do they have a timeout? I was incorrect. The last timeout was called by Bethune Cookman, not Alcorn. So that was Alcorn's last timeout. They're going to have 6.4 seconds to try and win the game. We didn't really get a good look. No, we never got into our offense that Coach Theus drew up. But that's because of their good defense. They did a nice job of trapping the ball out high in the middle of the floor, which is the least dangerous place to do that. And we did not take advantage of the four on three numbers that we could have. Coming up next for Bethune-Cookman, they head to the state of Alabama. A&M on Saturday. State on Monday, and then Jackson State here in uh, about 48 hours from okay, now. Okay, so we saw this strategy employed by the Alcorn team in the first half, at the end of the first half. Do you remember what their coach did, Mike? This is a test. What strategy did he use at the end of the first half so that we could not get a good shot? They fouled a lot. So should we do that now? Maybe we have four fouls to give. Yeah. And I think Coach Theus is, is telling him. I think he's going to do it, maybe. Well, we know for sure that we can foul out high and it won't hurt us. But let's not let's not wait to foul when somebody's don't, going yeah, to the don't bucket. Don't give and them shoot a chance to get yeah, to the line. That's right. That's what that's what I'm trying to say, Mike. Yeah. Well, well, it's, well said. It, it's gonna be a half court in. No. Well. Well. well they, they call the timeout. They can advance the ball. I don't. I don't because he took a dribble. He shouldn't be able to advance the ball. Oh no. Okay. So it is gonna be a baseline in. Yeah. Which was a mistake by them. Because they, they started to advance the ball and their coach called timeout, but it was too late. 6.4 seconds left, no timeouts left. All Corn State with a win would go to 10 and two in the SWAC. Bethune Cookman trying to even up their SWAC record at six and six. Joshua with five, into the front court, they do foul. Are they gonna call it a shooting foul? No, it shouldn't be, common foul. They did exactly what you said, instead of giving up the shot, they gave, up the, they gave up the foul. It's not going to hurt them. It's going to go against Dyson. Smart play by Dyson. We can do that again, and it won't hurt us. Thorne the gunner. Wildcats trying to hold and send this to overtime. Underneath it goes. It's Kendall. Did he travel? It's a jump ball, and it's all corn possession with .8 to go. Now I wonder if traveling is something you can challenge. I don't think it is. It's gonna be an inbound with .8. Remember, BCU had an inbound with .4 left in the first half, hit They're a three. They're going to Kendall, they're going to Kendall, no doubt. 
They lob it up. It's a slam at the buzzer, and all Corn State wins it. They threw it up to Dontrell McQuarter, and the senior from Baton Rouge is the hero. Now they're sending Alcorn State back to the bench to see if he got the shot off in time, but I think he did. Yeah, this is, remember, a very similar situation to when uh, Deshaun Dyson hit the game winner a couple of weeks ago against Alabama State. They're just going to check for reasons of well, it's the just rules. to be sure. It's the rules. Well, and, and, and they're looking to see maybe he scored and there was some time on the clock, which they're putting .2 on the clock. Well, if, they push, if there's .2 on the clock, the Wildcats are going to have to go the length of the floor in .2. It, yeah, you know, can't it's, be it's done. Not going to happen. This re it, it definitely reminds me of there was a, uh, a NCAA tournament game. It was either last year or the year before, but there was a big upset because there was a big dunk at the end off an inbounds play with point something left. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. I don't remember if it was one of the games that St. Peter's won last year, maybe. Yeah. But uh, it was a very similar situation. And what the Wildcats did is they double teamed Kendall, and then that left the quarter wide open. So they are going to put point two on the clock. Not sure what the Wildcats can do with this. They don't have a timeout to advance the ball. And the Braves will escape. They score the last two points of the contest, or six points of the contest, to steal one against the Wildcats here at Moore Gymnasium. Now the good news is, if we hit a long three, we win the game. Point four on the clock. French can't catch it. And Alcorn State stuns the Wildcats here at home. As but, I mentioned, they scored the last six points. Yeah. Bethune Cookman turned the ball over three times in the last two minutes. They led exactly at the right time in the second half, and that's at the end. Other than that, Bethune was up the entire, a lot of the second half. Alcorn State goes to 10 and two. Bethune Cookman call, falls to five and seven. And this is tough because Bethune Cookman is in a log jam with four teams at five and six coming into the day. Coming into the day, Alabama A&M, Prairie View A&M, and Alabama State all at five and six. You know, critical. And if any of those, if any of those teams win tonight, they jump the Wildcats, yeah. and that pushes us out of the playoffs. Yeah, turnovers at the wrong time. We didn't execute our offense out of the timeouts. Those things added up to give them the two-point victory. Alcorn State maintains their lead at the top of the conference. They've only got Grambling State and Southern chasing them uh, one game back. Let's get you through the final scoring totals. First for BCU, Joe French, or, or excuse me, Kevin Davis actually was the top scorer for the Wildcats. He had 18. French had 17. Garrett, 12. Harmon, 9. Dyson, 8. Robertson in only 15 minutes had 6. Henderson and McIntyre both had two. Womack and Gouda Vicious played but did not score. Good to see Simeon Womack in the game. And for Alabama, uh, for Alcorn State, excuse me, 15 each from Walker and Joshua. Kendall had 12. Thorne and Montgomery had 11. Marshall, 7. McCorder, 4, including the game winning dunk. And Pajou had 1. Wade and Carter played but did not score. And free throws, Mike, you know, that's the difference, right? If we shoot our normal uh, free throw percentage, we win this game, right? Yep, only seven of 12 from the free throw line tonight for the Wildcats, that's 58%. Uh, 10 of 12 for the Braves, that's 83.3%, and there's your difference right there. There is your difference, yeah. We'll be back on Monday for a doubleheader against Jackson State. The league-leading Lady Tigers come in at 5.30. And then at 8 o'clock, it's the men's game. And that's really now a must-win game for the men's team to try and keep their playoff hopes alive and allowed coming out of the last two yeah. weeks of the season. Yeah, I think they'll rebound very strong from this. You know, this is one of those one of those losses where it stings enough where you want to take it out on the next game and the next team. And I, I think we'll do that. Well, that'll do it for us here at Bethune-Cookman University. For my partner, Eric Dennis, our producer, um, and everybody here at the Cat Eye Network kind of lost for words 
at the end of that one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back on Monday. Have a very pleasant, good rest of your evening.